now and say, let's deal a little bit with our town. As I spoke to you, yes. my concern with our town is not my evaluation of your directorial work in our town, but there will be things as we talk, as time goes, about our town. So, to start off, you know now you're going to do it our town. What do you do? What I did you do? read the play. We read the play. And I tried to, to study around it, picked up essays on it, whatever critiques I could, to try to get some background. What do you mean by background? I, I wanted to really research what the spine of play was, what different takes on them, because it was certainly a play that's been part of history and has been done and it's considered an American classic, so I wanted to be as knowledgeable as I could be. So I did a little bit of that, not to my satisfaction, but... Well, let me ask you, what yeah. knowledge were you seeking, and what knowledge did you get? I wanted to try to put together in my mind, what is this play about? Which is exactly what you were talking about earlier, the director's job is to figure out what the play is about, right. to convey that message. So, and, and not only to convey it, but that it is your responsibility and solely your responsibility to use every element that is going to exist to play that tune, that to get that message across. Right. So I first wanted to research and get a sense of the theme for myself. Okay, well, what is well, we talked out. We talked a little bit about the fact that um, you know, to me, it seemed the, the play is somewhat complex to me. I kept coming back to this central theme. Let me, let me just say something. Something in what you just said was indicative of one of the problems that I thought existed. You said it was somewhat complex. That is a non-particular, non-specific response. And it seems to mean, as you spoke it, that there were elements I didn't know what to do with, or that there were elements that didn't seem graspable, or... In wanting to research the play, I felt like, wow, this this play is, yeah, every time I read it, it's there's something else, there's a lot to it. So I felt like I had my hands full. In other words, I didn't see it as simplistic. No, no, so no. my research was a challenge to me. I felt like I was seeking answers that I didn't have at the research beginning. Research is always good. You can find out a little bit of about an apple by somebody reading what somebody said about apples. Yeah. But you actually find out what an apple is like dealing with the apple. Yeah. Here, it takes a yeah. great part to see what's inside. So for heal. What its texture, what its nature is, right. what happens to the apple when you take the peel off and leave it, so it's in the ground, but that's on the surface, what happens, all of the things are burned up, you need to find out by dealing with the apple. Now, the other research is fine, but you may find in any number of plays that the people who have written this don't know what they're talking about. And if you find something that says, well, this is what the play's about, you have to go back to the play and say, I'm going to read it and see if that's what, and if it is, every single element of that play falls into place. When you are working with a complex piece of material, and you know it, it's not a complex piece of material, it's not somewhat complex. Once you know the animal, it becomes less complex. Right? It's not complex at all. Yeah. You just know that this is the foot, right. this is the law that goes into the foot and is used for purposes. There's nothing complex about it. So, so that already shows that you either didn't know fully how all of the elements of the play were working, or that you're not confident of that. And if you're not confident that no, you don't know. And when you know what a play is about, it's not complex, it's not simple, it's, it's just this is this, yeah. this is that. It's made up of seven colors, blue, green, orange, gray. They come in this, the blue is first, the uh, gray is second, the green is third, etc. So there's no complexity. Even in the most sophisticated script, dealing with the most sophisticated behavior, because you have to know at every second what the simple element is that together, if you don't know, seems complex. Right. So that's just a little thing to try to keep in mind. Whenever you feel, gee, this is kind of rough, uh, I don't quite, you know, not quite getting a hold of it maybe, or it seems odd, it seems complex, and yeah. that is a symptom from you to yourself to say, wait, I don't know what it is. Because when you do, it's not complex enough. But let's go on. So, and, so what I kept coming back to for me is the fact that life is a gift. 
needs to be appreciated. It's the experience of living. Why do you think that that's good? Well, I think I, I think it can be sort of summed up when in, in Act Three when she when he uses this device of her going back and the lesson that Emily learns in, in doing that, what she now sees that she couldn't see before, and that isn't this is such a precious gift, you know. We have to appreciate it every minute of our life. And then he has the line about, well, does anybody appreciate life? And he says, well, maybe the, the poets and the saints do some, but essentially no. Right. And so it's, that seems to be the core of the message of, 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 of the play. Uh, it, I, I think it gets complex a little bit in that the, uh, you know, there's a little bit of, there's a lot of Christian, you know, uh, what would be the word? Uh, seems like a, a lot of Christian influence there. And, and, and that the Yes. Well, and the he thing was about Christian. that is the the Agamemnon is affected with Greek religion value. Yeah, yeah. All of those things. Those things, when you see, that's a problem. If you're supposed to get that value out of it, the religious value out of it, if you're supposed to get Jesus out of that play. Say, say again, that that would be a problem if that's the because case. Because a lot of people, that's not a universal reality. Some right. people believe, some yeah, people yeah. don't. Right, that's why I think it's influenced by, I, I, I think the writer, it's in there because I believe the writer has a Christian value, but I think the core message is still what, I, what Human, I'm talking about. not Christian. Yeah, it's yes. talking about, yes. you know, so appreciate so it while there? you have it. So what do you do there? You, that means that you have to... Diminish, diminish that. Okay. Yeah. It can be somebody who's really Christian now, and right? At, with the audience identifying with them, yes. So they now say, like, "Yeah, I'm Jewish." I don't yeah. That. So I, in a sense, I, I did not pay attention to that element of it. I felt it this was is only a small. Yeah, thing. I felt it was inherent in the. It was in the play, but I felt it was the author's. All I'm trying to suggest yeah. is there's a problem when you find out what the play is about. Any play is about what you're going to do. Not to the satisfaction only of, I think I know what this is about. Yes, then you don't. But to the satisfaction of, it's just, it's not debatable. It makes no difference what anybody told you. If they told you the Nobel Prize winner for American critical drama criticism said that the play is something else, when you know what the play is, you'll say, like, yeah, I don't want to stop that. I don't care if you want a Nobel Prize for this criticism or not. Right. He doesn't get the play. He doesn't know what it is. Because every play has one life and one life only. One message and one message only. It is an apple. It's not an orange. It's not a diseased apple. It's not a crab apple. It's a particular Granny Smith apple that is ripe at the time for picking. Right. If that's what the play is about. So, I only interrupt it to say, once you see that, for the director, you have to say, that's a problem. All art is not religious, even religious art. All art is humanist. And its basic message is humanist for all human beings universally. I had Chinese painting about torture and the helplessness of the torture. It affects me, it affects somebody in Iran, it affects an Eskimo, it affects any human being on the earth equally. And it's been painted in such a way that it will listen from anybody. So, same as the play. The humanist message is what you're always after. Uh, life is to be cherished, it's to be appreciated, it's to be experienced. It's short, it's transitory, there's a lot of stuff about time in this play, how it's very transient, but there's something beyond just materialism, and that's, to me, that's the bond that is, that is connected. That is a very strong bond, and that bond is not easily broken. And to me, that was represented in the play. Well, actually, it is broken. She died. Even. She dies. Yeah. Now, this is another danger. When you know what a play is about, it's about one thing. It's not also about another thing, which is in the same kind of category, illusory connection. You can't be in love and ambivalent. It's only one thing. In life, we actually work totally in that that's the proof of human experience. It's always one thing, even though we often think it's several. For instance, if one guy is going around and sleeping with three different girls, 
the stuff he likes, which what he also likes, you know, or he just also likes them. He's trying to make a certain male-female connection. That's the central thing. And whether he does it with this older woman or this young girl, those are different experiences. But it's not about, also, variety is great in life. That's not what he's doing, variety is great in life. Unless that is what he's doing, then he's not really trying to make a human connection and not really quite doing it, so he has to have a lot of different people to do it. So when you can start to tell yourself, well, it's about this, but I also think it's about that, that's trouble. It means that you don't really have your teeth in what it is actually about. Now, you're right, the author does say what this is actually about in that third act. It said, he says essentially, the character essentially says what about being alive? The woman who's already dead and is fighting for her. How wonderful it was. But how wonderful it was. And but what's the problem with being alive? What's the problem with being alive? Is that you get so caught up in the, in the, in the, the little things that, you know, you worry about and you want this and you have to do it. And you get caught up with these little human passions that lead you astray from the, the appreciation. All right, you get that in yeah. the third act. Yeah. And she goes to see people. What should be she be seeing? Not nice, genial behavior. She should be seeing people who are caught up with the little things. What right I'm saying mother. is, and what the author is saying is, if life is grand opera and it hurts, you're supposed to appreciate the whole grand opera. You're supposed to appreciate the hurt as well. Now, we get in the third act, and yeah. that's what we're supposed to have done, that people in their life don't do it, so they miss out. Only later, when you don't have that anymore, you don't have the life, so you can't have the appreciation of life. You only have the loss of the appreciation. When I had all of life, I didn't appreciate that it was living that was important, not whether I got to the store early or didn't get, or whether the person wore the wrong dress or the right dress, or when we got married, did we get married in the right way or the wrong way? Uh, our town is an unusual structure, isn't it? In that the you know the conceit in Act Three is so different from Act One and Act Two. But what I'm saying here is this: if you know that in Act Three you are going to have it told you that life is not the day-to-day arguments and stuff. Life is even in the argument appreciating the bigger picture that, after all, we're alive. You have a juxtaposition in that play of people who appreciate life by the loss of it. So now that they're just empty of anything that life gave them, but the conceit of the play is that they have a consciousness where they can recognize that. That is juxtaposed with people who are in life and don't appreciate it. Now, if you have all of those scenes in the first two acts being played naturally, and genially, how are you, Mr. So-and-so? Oh, I'm fine. How are you? You don't have that juxtaposition. First two acts, there hasn't been, people weren't yelling at each other and fighting and looking like it mattered more about the dress than that I'm getting married. You didn't have any of that. So when she says, oh, it's, look how people behave, you say, well, what, what do you mean what, how they behave? They were fine, they were nice, they were genial to each other somewhat, partially, by the way, because... In acting any of those scenes, I wouldn't have let you play any of those characters speaking the lines on the line drive. In that production, the first two acts, everything was said on line drive. Well, I'm going to the store now. If this were the value, I'm going to the store now. I want to. Every time I turn around, i got to go to the store. Is the attitude. But the lie only says, I'm going to the store now. Everything was said, I'm going to the store now. How are you, Mr. So-and-so? It's good to see you on the street. You don't have the world that he's trying to show first, which he says that's not the way to live. You have people very nice, friendly with each other, talking nicely to each other. Nobody seems in a hurry to do anything. Nobody seems to be trying to achieve something. This is all for people appreciating life. So when the woman says that, you say, what are you talking about? That's not what happened. Now, what I was saying was an interesting thing. First two acts, the audience was restless. Many of those people didn't know the play, I'm sure. Hadn't read it, don't know what it's supposed to be about. Everything being played Nambi Pambi on the line. There's nothing in it. There's no dramatic elements in it. There's no dramatic element. A dramatic element is I do something that makes you do something. Instead of I do something, you do something, I do something, you do something. And so the audience was restless. Totally. I was not the least of them restless. But that's what, what I saw. Now, the third act started, and now it's apparent these people 
Well, they liked affably enough before. They weren't in any dramatic situations. They were just in normal life and were going to the store. But I like them. They're affable. But now if I got their dead, that's very quiet. So the play pulled them into the play. Why that was different, why the audience responded differently, is they didn't want They didn't have that much to do when the people weren't doing anything. They liked the people. Nothing they were doing was too dramatic. And yeah, I get it. You know, she talked to a neighbor about this. And then she talked to Russell, and that was the talk to the neighbor about this. You know, it's fine. Yeah. But but they were affable. So no reason not to like them. So they liked them. But now all of the place says, guess what? They're dead. She died in shelter. Well, this play has taken a turn, hasn't it? No, it's not that. That's an intellectual thing. <laughs> play. I know the play. They still don't want them to die the next time they see No, the play. you're still rooting for Juliet yeah. and Romeo, right, right. no matter how many times you see right. It's not that. It's just that yeah. you want them to live and not die. Yeah. You want them to have life. Now, that continued for the first half of the third act. And then it began to be a little less. But well, what she goes into the flashback. I can't remember even when, but yeah. just about some point halfway through, I was again aware of, their, of the audience kind of doing yeah, it. You know, yeah. okay, all right, we get it. Let's get to the end. Now, it's a that's a tricky line to walk in terms of the creation of that Act One and Act Two, emphasizing you know that the fact that these these people are not appreciating their life, they're getting caught up because you can't go. It's a it's a fine line. You can't go negative. It's not a matter of... You know what I'm you saying. Don't, wait. You no, have no, to no. root for the character. I'm now. interrupting you because I don't like what you're saying. It's not that you go negative or positive or anything. It's what the play must do. And that, again, with the lines properly analyzed, you'll see how the author was good enough to do things that make you not quite like them so much. Or you, So that when later the woman says, you know, it's because in all of the hustle and bustle of life, we never, we said, yeah, that's what I felt back there before. You don't want to be genial in the audience. We always think it's nice and genial, because without a dramatic situation, it's boring. Mm-hmm. You can say hello to the postman, and he smile, and he smiles back, and but you can't do it for 20 minutes in a row. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing okay. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing okay. Well, are you doing okay? Well, how are you doing? What we both doing? Okay, right? You can't do that. You'll shoot yourself in the head. Right. You can't stand it. So the, what seems genial, even in the most kind of genial life, that's why he got those kind of people to play that. If he put them in New York, everybody says, well, of course, New York, rat race, you're running around, nobody sees. No. Even in the most genial of life. The friendly folk. The, the people. Down the word friendly folk. Don't appreciate. Don't well, appreciate. Well, you say, when you see them all being nice to each other all the time and be normally excited about things and normally concerned about things. And then we're told later if they don't appreciate like you, I tell them they don't appreciate you. Like you. It's because in those first two acts, what are the actual elements of each of those little scenes? What they're in actually. In fact, here comes the town drunk walking down the street and we say, Oh, how you doing, Bob? Oh, I'm doing pretty good today. And he's just a town he's a town drunk. He's a lost soul, a human being who cannot be retrieved, and now he's only the town drunk. So he takes even the most genial circumstance, but the director has to show that those are not genial circumstances, that those, even in a genial atmosphere, is people who are not appreciating life for the living of it, or for its magical quality, that when it's gone, it's horrible that it's gone. If you have experienced that with a relative or a pet, or if you've had a real death in your life, something you cared about, it can't be dealt with. Diane and I had bought a puppy. I bought her a puppy for Valentine's Day that we had for seven years. And she got lung cancer. Dogs can get lung cancer, not from smoking. <laughs> it's a different kind of cancer. Uh, it was the first real death in my life. And how long did you I have was lost her seven years. The loss of her. And even now, if I think about her, uh, I get sad. And it hurts me. That's the kind of quality that he's at. So then we've got to experience all of the things he's talking about as negative in the first two acts. And it's going to take two acts when they're genial. So it builds up 
little snitty remarks here, little things up there. Right. The way people deal with each other in a way that you don't impose. You have to look into that scene and see why. Where it is. Yeah. When the, when the town drunk comes, what does that really mean? Not what does it mean in a genial, nice play called Our, Our Town, and he's just one of our characters. And people don't, even in the play, they don't follow their heart because Emily wants to be a, a, a speech giver. She wants to be right. a politician or something. Settles to get married to society, tells her. Right. George has a talent, maybe as a baseball player, maybe. Um, gets married because society... I'd have to go back and read the play and go through, and each line, you'd have to see what is the negative thing that they're doing that they're not appreciating life, mm -hmm. and how what, how is that in this particular little situation yeah. of seeing the town drunk come down the street and talking to him, mm -hmm. how does that express itself? Yeah. In a way that the audience knows, this is not a genial uh, night on the street with a nice town drunk who everybody kind of gets. Right. And you like him, okay, and he doesn't bother any other people. You, know, you can't be that. And then get to the third act. Right. Yeah, I, I saw it in the, like, it, Doc Gibbs comes to mind in that he, uh, I mean, it may seem like a small thing in the text, but it's not. It's not. You know, he won't, you know, he won't really embrace his wife's dreams. Right. As simple as, can we go to Paris once instead right. of going to the Gettysburg? It's in lines where she says, you know, I sometimes feel like when we walk through that Gettysburg field, we're taking measurements of it, like we're going to move exactly. there. Exactly. It's in lines like that. Right. It's not just, oh, darling, I'd rather go to Paris. It's not that. Yeah, yeah. She has to be unhappy with them. Genial people get very unhappy with each other. <laughs> in small towns, they shoot each other with yeah. shotguns and all kinds of stuff. And the women in those towns could be the nicest, sweetest things to somebody's face. And as soon as that other woman gets out of the earshot, they eviscerate her. Mm -hmm. So that every other woman now hates her. Yeah. All the women now gang up and hate this one woman because they think she's sexually attracted. Those kinds of things happen in most towns. Well, the property housewives hate the good looking woman yeah. moves it down. Now, Wilder does, he's clever in that he throws in these little points where they. they they are showing some appreciation, stopping the smell of flowers. You know, uh, Mrs. Gibbs says, oh, Frank, come out and smell my heliotrope. There you sense that she has a little more appreciation than he does. You know? Unless, maybe, but also unless she say, come out and smell, smell my heliotrope. As if she is the one who causes it to smell better. Instead of the point of view of the author from the dead people would be, it's nobody's just smell it because nature created it. Yeah. And if you're a Christian, you say because God created it. Well, again, it's the idea of not letting one's ego get in the way of the well, enjoyment of life. Because the ego takes right. you here and all here and you worry about so this. And you worry, what's all the worry So those for? scenes is not a nice, genial scene. It has to be something where you see it. And it makes you uncomfortable that they're a little bit snotty and so forth. And you don't really like them that much. And at the end, the thing is that if you see them, the ones who die, you wouldn't want to die because they're at least like their, their sins are less than some of the other people's. But you have to see it in everybody. You mean the people that are dead are the most likable? Is that what you, their sins are a little less? No, I mean the ones that you're supposed to care about who died. Yeah, you Miss, Mrs. Gibbs, Emily. Yes. Mrs. Gibbs and Emily and so forth. Right. It's particularly Emily is who going in moment. Yeah. Because we saw her young and we saw her growing up and we saw her getting married and we saw her wanting things and things like that. And she doesn't really do too much that's negative to other people. It's really her story. It's her story. Yeah. And that when all of the people are sitting there dead, it's not that they're dead that made the audience sad. It's that Emily is dead. Absolutely. You don't want you don't want her to die. Yeah, she's a human being. Who you like, you don't want her yeah, to yeah. die. And you got to hear about how she was such a good speech giver, and right, and all of those. And by the way, she's the smart one. By the way, there's a little problem. If they say she's a speech giver, she has to speak like a good speech giver. She can't speak like a normal person because then, if somebody says she's a good speech giver, it's just meaningless to an audience. That's something yeah. somebody said. Right. But when they say it as a reinforcement of what you've already seen, then it has value. So the reason that everybody was 
disengage the first two acts. It's what the dramatic elements were supposed to happen in all those little scenes were happening. And again, it's because you didn't recognize how those elements of the play had to work in concert with the third, with act. The third act, which now says you shouldn't do that. And everybody says, Jesus Christ, no wonder it's terrible that they died. Yeah. And it's terrible that you have to die to realize that you've got to learn how to live. Yeah. Because all the things that you do when you think you're living aren't living. Living is appreciating life, appreciating people. Of, of, it's a religious experience in a non uh, deified way. In other words, it is recognizing what you are part of when you're alive. That it, once it's gone, can never come back. And that's the tragedy of humanity, which is that there's always an end for everybody. That's the tragedy of human existence. So our town, the little play, is about the tragedy of human existence. So anyway, you didn't, I don't think, properly recognize the problem of that play in relation to what it itself says. Yeah. So it was interesting because I think I, I got the theme, but then I didn't do what I had to do to bring it, to bring it out, particularly in the relationship of, of the structure of that play where it all comes down to Act 3 and then how Act 1 and Act 2 has to serve Act 3 right. for it to work. So that's, yeah. Yeah. That starts to be knowing the play. It's not just do I know a theme, do I know the play. Right. No. You have to know, as I was saying before, you have to know every element of the album. And you have to know how every moment of the play will illustrate the theme. Now, everybody in that play, even in the third act, there was still a good deal of, they're only talking on the line. And then therefore you don't get to play. So you didn't have the actors aware of what they're really saying when they're saying, how are you, Mrs. Bowles? And it was played genially, because it's our town, and we're nice people, and it's simple, and we're nice, simple people. How are you, Mrs. Bowles? Well, if you didn't like Mrs. Bowles, how are you doing, Mrs. Bowles? Yeah, good to see you again. How do you think the neighbors feel about each other? I'd have to go back to the play. And yeah, yeah look at it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the genial fruit of all towns is strong fences make good neighbors. Because then you have to deal with their life and what they want and what their ego says. In one of the Power of Men series, Joseph Campbell says, I don't think that people, although they always talk about what's the meaning of life, they're not after the meaning of life. What they're after is the experience of living. And that's what that play is about. What they should be about is the experience of living, recognizing it and fulfilling it.